Hello, and welcome to another Bad Review. Today, we're, I just finished reading Total Justice Issue 1. This was a three-part miniseries back in 1996, tied in with the Kenner action figure line they were doing. Now, it, it primarily fe features uh, Batman, Robin, the Tim Drake Robin, um, Aquaman, when he was more of the uh, Gordon's fisherman one hook with a hook guy, um, the Flash, Green Lantern, and I think they did a Superman figure, if I remember correctly. Uh, this was written by Christopher Priest, with art by Raymond Bernardo, inks by Dick Gerardo, Giardo, sorry. Gasper did the lettering, Gene D'Angelo was the colorist, and Ruben Diaz editor. Alright, since this was a t uh, toy tie-in, it's generally those aren't very good. Unless you go back to the 80s when they did some stuff that was a little bit better, a little more highbrow. This one opens up with Robin on a subway train or a metro, barreling across at insane speeds, and it's a school day, so he shouldn't be out. Well, it turns out there's this Iggy, IG, insane guy, as they, they refer to it. He's got a C4 strapped to his chest, and he's gonna kill everything in the island of life death to life he keeps yelling and robin sees him standing on a dead man switch and doesn't want to set the c4 off so he's got to hold him down until they go into a tunnel where batman shows up to save the day next thing you know uh robin's on a yacht with his dad and they're gonna go see some island that this crazy guy turned out to be the owner of and he was trying to sell the island so they're going to look for a deal well, some hands come up and yank the boat under. There's a shipwreck. There's a guy down in the water. Looks sort of like a parademon. And uh, starts attacking Robin. Robin's in trouble. Manages to escape. But there's wreckage everywhere and he's floating there. Next thing we see is Wally West, the Flash, running across the water. And he meets up with Green Lantern. It's a very quick, fast-paced introduction to everybody. Most of these characters were well-known. They all had their own books. So it wasn't a surprise that, you know, we're talking about the Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, and Wally West. That's who these guys were then. Then we get to see Aquaman right as these guys' powers cut out. Aquaman's fine. Uh, but he's got his hook hand, and he's dragging them in a net. Takes them on the beach and dumps them. And he's a real jerk about everything. And he blames them for some random thing with the animals being dead within a mile radius. I don't know why he's blaming them. They clearly just got there. And he's been, he was kind of a jerk around this time anyway, but it's his extra special jerky here. Then we cut to the Justice League trying to formulate a plan, and we got a whole panorama of people. Superman, Martian Manhunter, Blue Beetle, Ted Cord Blue Beetle, I should say. Captain Atom, Booster Gold, Firestorm, and a bunch of people I don't care about. I don't know who they are. I think it's the Checkmate or somebody, Task Force. Let's say Task Force, so I don't even care. But Batman shows up and he's like, I got it handled. Shut up and sit down. The only people that won't be affected by this would be Blue Beetle and Batman. So Batman's like, you need Blue Beetle here to help you sort this out. So I'm going alone. And then he leaves. And everybody's like, okay. So back on the island, we see Flash and Green Lantern sitting around being mopey and having a conversation. Then the, this bad guy shows up again. And he starts beating the crap out of them because they don't have their powers, which apparently these... Very athletic men have no ability to do any hand-to-hand -hand without their superpowers, which is absolutely ludicrous. They've all been in tons of fights. They would at least know how to throw a punch or two, maybe some kicks. Yeah, they're slower now and they have less powers, but they're still not incompetent boobs, like they're kind of portrayed as. But don't worry, Robin shows up to rescue them, and he's managed to create a cape out of some rags and a little mask and he's got like a sack on a stick that he hits the bad guy with dumb uh but yeah it hits him in the eyes which is apparently the weak spot on him so they start running away but the bad guy quickly catches up with them and they don't tell you who the bad guy is but he looks like a parademon so he scoops up robin and they get up in the air and start fighting and robin uh manages to bap him one in the eyes right as batman's showing up but that's when he quickly realizes that they're in the air. So he starts falling out of the sky. Cliffhanger ending. All right, the story is actually not bad. Uh, in the 90s when this came out, I, I remember having this issue back then. And I was not a big Christopher Priest fan. I've come to appreciate him a lot more over the years. But in the mid-90s, there was a lot of garbage out. And quite honestly, the art in this is horrific. 
I detest the style. It's like this pseudo manga, weird muscles. Like it looks like you know, page five, Batman shows up to stop the train. It looks like he has boobs in the middle of his chest, but they're supposed to be pec muscles. It looks really weird. And this guy doesn't draw faces real well, in my opinion. I think everybody looks like they're about to take a huge poop, and their expressions are over-exaggerated. Their mouths look like they're really long, and uh, muscle toning looks fine. He can draw bodies pretty well. It's heads and hair that he can't do. Aquaman looks like a raving lunatic through the entire thing. He just, his hair's all sticking out everywhere. It looks silly. And same with, like, when they do the Justice League scene, everybody's face looks weird, elongated. Superman looks like he has Down syndrome. Uh, Martian Manhunter looks like he's uh, been bashed in the head a few times by an ugly tree. Batman's face has these weird lines. That I, I don't even know what those look like. They just look like he's got some kind of, like, jaw missing or something. So yeah, it's the art is horrific. It really hurts the issue. The hairstyles look bad enough because they are incredibly dated now. But the fact that the guy can't draw heads and hair worth a damn really, really hurts it. Because uh, like Wonder Woman has this big poofy. Uh, it looks like the I don't know somebody dumped a can of motor oil into some jelly or something and stuck it on her head. It looks silly. But yeah, the, he has good. He draws arms really well and, and legs, but he th seems to have a problem with like stomach muscles, like the, in the abs and faces. Faces are his biggest weak point. So yeah, this I I think he's trying to imitate like Rob Liefeld. So I, it's not a style I enjoy. So yeah, I did not like the art. It really hurt the story. Story was okay. It, it was reasonably interesting. The dialogue was a little rigid, but not bad. It was a 225 cover price, so it was a little expensive for the time, I think. But yeah, I don't know. This one, you kind of have to really be into the toy line, or it, it works well for selling toys, but I don't think it really works otherwise. And we haven't really got to any of the things that are related to the toys with the special armor and whatever, but we'll see that in the next issue. So yeah, this one was okay. I would definitely have read it and picked up issue two, which I know I did. But yeah, when I reread this today, I was just the art is is not aged well. It was bad then. It's it looks even more awful now. So that would definitely hurt the experience of reading it. But if you like this type of quasi exaggerated manga, um, yeah, I would go for it. But I don't I don't like it. I think it's hideous. So that'll do it for this one. Uh, come back uh, in a few hours. Part two should be up. So we'll look at issue two next. As always, thanks for listening. We hope to see you next time. Hello and welcome back to Bad Comic Review. Today we are looking at issue two of Total Justice. This is issue two of a three-part series based around the action figure line from 1996. Now, as an action figure tie-in, as I said in the previous episode, you have to have some pretty tempered expectations. Usually these are aimed at much younger readers and not the adult collector, and most comics these days are aimed at adults. So we open up with uh, Christopher Priest writing, Tom Morgan on pencils, Dick Gerondo... Gir I'm never going to get that. On inks and Gasper on letterer, Gene D'Angelo colorist, and Ruben Diaz editor. Not to say the art is significantly better in here. It's still not great. I don't know why people can't draw hairstyles right. Like Captain Adam has some sort of weird Elvis thing going. But other than that, it opens with the Justice League talking. And it's the same cast from before. I think the Ray is kicking around in there this time. And we get an introduction to Fractal Armor. The Blue Beetle came up with, and it's basically the toy tack-on armor that came with the figures. And it's just an excuse to uh, adapt to the toy line. So, there's some trouble. We Back on the island, Robin was falling through the sky. That was our cliffhanger. And we get some interesting dialogue from Wally, talking about how, you know, he could have done something. And he's usually really fast, but he's lost his powers. And he's there's actually a really great core quote in here it says my god i'm actually getting bored waiting for this kid to die and it shows robin falling out of the sky robin's face looks really weird uh, there's some like edge lines on his cheek that don't make any sense it looked like he doesn't know how to eat his lunch and then suddenly he turns his crappy cape into a crude airfoil seriously 
All right, so that's silly, granted, but if you're like 12 or 13, way cooler. So Batman shows up and throws an inflatable raft to catch him, and while he's kicking himself because he could have done something like that much faster when he had his speed power. And Kyle Rayner just figures out that that kid is actually Robin. And everybody's uh, standing around. Aquaman shows up and he's like, hey, check it out. There's some caverns over here. And Green Lantern's like, look, I'm just some dude. I don't have a power ring, so I'm leaving. So Ted Kord shows up with the fractal armor and Green Lantern gets in the ship and gives his armor to Robin. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Batman decides to stay and help out. Uh, Robin's not going to leave without uh, the hostages. And they suit up in their armor. And they do some posing. Then they go underwater. Wally complains some more. Then they take the bug. Uh, Blue Beetle, this girl from the task force. I don't remember. I think they were Justice League Task Force or something stupid like that. They were trying to hype that book for a while. And uh, Kyle Rayner are on the the bug and uh, surprise guess who's in the bathroom it's a parademon i was right those were parademons in the last issue it was just poorly drawn so they looked like some crappy minor villain and then this this weird parademon is talking about sun Tzu for some reason and uh he goes by the name of mike and he hits the eject button and shoots uh the the lady whose name i don't know and blue beetle out of the ejection seats and Kyle's stuck with the parademon. And then uh, we cut back to the guys in the cavern and something weird's going on, but we don't quite know what. They're trying to work around the armor and Wally starts running and he sees himself saying, hey, just take off the armor. You don't need it. You can run. So he takes the armor off and sure enough, he can run. And we cut back to uh, Kyle Rayner for a second and the guy just, uh, the parademon just keeps saying weird stuff. Uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Then uh, Aquaman, uh, we cut back to Aquaman. He's holding this gem thing that I don't really know where he picked it up. I didn't see that. It's, this ma doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And suddenly he's got his other hand back and he sees his baby and his wife Mira. For some reason they're in the palace. Then we get another thing with uh, Kyle Rayner and the bug with the parademon the bug uh the parademon makes the bug explode and uh green lantern's about to plummet to his death when he remembers they're far enough away from the island that he can use his powers but he's got some kind of idea doesn't say what it is then we cut over to batman and batman is seeing jason todd tied to a giant joker card and batman knows that something's not right because jason's dead and he uh dismantles the trap and opens a secret panel and he knows that uh, there's illusions now, so he's like, all right. So he warns Robin, and we cut over Robin. He's like, got it. I'm seeing one of those illusions now. And then you flip to the last page, and standing there is who else? Darkseid. We knew Darkseid was in on it because they said that on page one. But it's pretty predictable because um, who else has the parademons? All right, so overall, not a bad issue. Um, not great. Not that memorable, honestly. But uh, for younger readers, it's probably fine. Especially if you have the old toys kicking around. I know there were two versions of Aquaman. Remember that. There was a gold one and a gray one. His shoulder piece was different colors. The gold one was the chase one. I don't think they're worth very much anymore. But yeah, it's, it's not a bad read. It, it's a very fast read, though. I don't think it's going to go up in value anytime soon. Most of these toy tie-ins don't. Storyline's okay. Dialogue's still a little rigid. Uh, the priest isn't real great at dialogue at this point in his career. I know he's gotten much better over the years, but this, I think, was one of his earlier works in the first few years of his career. But I'm not going to fault him for that. It, it's okay. It's not badly written, but it's definitely aimed at a younger crowd. So be sure to remember that when you're if you decide to pick it up. And the art is a massive step up from the first issue. But that'll do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for listening, and hopefully you'll join us on the next episode. Welcome back to another bad comic review. Today we are, of course, looking at Total Justice Issue 3, the final part of the three-part series. Uh, the cover art's pretty cool. It's got Dark Side standing there looking all menacing while the heroes are fighting some parademons. And you open it up and we've got Kyle Rayner suddenly wearing fractal armor, which he didn't have before. This time we've got layouts by uh, Dennis Cohen and 
finishes by Dick. I'm sorry, sir, whoever you are. Dick Gir- Gir- Dano? Giordano? I don't know. And Vince Gir- Guerrero. Uh, yep, I apologize to both those gentlemen for screwing up their names. Casper, or Gasper did letters again. Gene D'Angelo colors. Ruben Diaz editor. <sighs> the art is pretty mediocre. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's pretty close. So basically, this is a real fast paced episode. Not a whole lot happens. It, they're just kind of wrapping up the toy tie in. And honestly, if they had made this like a six part series or even a four part series, it probably would have been a lot better. But as it is, it's just kind of a little too fast paced. So we get um, Green Lantern catching up with Batman, and they now refer to the armor as Fractal Tech Gear, which sounds a little cooler than just Fractal Armor. And they're trying to up their game a little bit, so it sounds cooler with the marketing team, I think. Meanwhile, Robin found Darkseid, and he starts poking him and talking about what a clever illusion it is, and then Darkseid just palms his head and saps him, which is actually pretty funny. Uh, but the, uh, the armor kept him alive for whatever reason. So, uh, yeah, he's just, uh, trying to shoot at Darkseid, and Darkseid's having none of it. Darkseid is, is, uh, he's got a great line here. I am no construct insect. You live only because I am in need of information. Tell me where I can find the one called Mike. And Mike is that crazy parademon we saw earlier in the first two issues. Uh, he destroyed Blue Beetle's bug. And it turns out the guy's just insane. He's been there for centuries. And Batman finds him and is talking to him where the hostages are. Robin's catching up with Wally West and Green Lantern. Green Lantern knocks him out of the illusion by giving him a right hook to the face. And they figure out these these orbs that um, Aquaman had found last issue. He had found one and Wally found one this time. Uh, Have something to do with the illusions. Well, they start goofing around and then uh, Batman's talking to Mike and his... I guess it's a real wife and kid. I I don't even know. So Aquaman gets knocked out of his um, delusion too. Yep, it's not particularly exciting. It's just okay. Then Darkseid shows up and the whole team's together. We get all five of them. And he says, uh, what bravery in the face of certain death. The the Omega effect bounces around and hits the orb. And uh, nothing really happens. The orb absorbs it, and uh, then he says he's going to kill them. Batman's like, you can try, and then there's a big fight. The good guys fight the bad guys from two-page spread. As Darkseid's like, well, this didn't work. The experiment reached an impasse centuries ago. I should have recalled my forces. I'll do so now once they kill you guys, and they're like, no, that was it. That's the whole battle. It should have been like a page or two longer. Then they just pop up out of the water and um, free the hostages, and... Tim's back in his civilian clothes. And somehow there's a police van on this island with a bunch of police cars. I don't know how. They were far out in the water, but whatever. We'll just pretend that's a thing now. And Batman goes down to talk to uh, Mike and say, Hey, you did us a solid. We'll leave you alone if you don't cause any problems for us. He's like, I don't care. I got the internet. I'm good. I got some C-SPAN. He actually says C-SPAN. Then we end on a final shot of the heroes in their fractal armor which really doesn't look like it does on the toys should have been color coded like it was for the action figures i don't think the figure ones had been completed by the time this issue was released which is a little disappointing honestly again should have been a at least a four-part story they could add a little more time to let things kind of breathe and explore a little more and go into a little more detail dark side just kind of shows up doesn't really do anything just like, all right, this showed up for this orb thing. It, it didn't work. I'm leaving. No, that's dumb. Like, he had them at a total disadvantage at first. Their powers didn't work. There should have been some use of that, but there really wasn't. I think it was an interesting concept they could have explored further. They just didn't go into enough detail. They didn't give it enough issues or space. So some of the writing was a little... I don't want to say lazy, because I think he was trying. He just... I think he was a newer writer at the time. And like I said, for me, Priest was hit and miss at the time. So I think he's gotten a lot better. His Black Panther run was significantly better than this. But yeah, overall, it's it's okay. It's a good kid's book. If you want to give some safe books for your kids to read, uh, this three-part story, you know, it's a complete storyline. And you could probably track the figures down. But it's not a bad story and it's pretty safe for kids. 
So that'd be my overall take. It's This issue was a little rushed, I think. And it, it did wrap it up pretty nicely, though. So, But that's all I got to say. It's okay. I won't seek it out, but if you find it, you got nothing better to do. It's better than some of the other stuff I've seen more recently. But that'll do it for this one. As always, thank you for listening. Be sure to join us again, if you can, for the next episode. And we'll see you then.